Hello and welcome to a video with me, Raindell. I was originally planning on releasing this two weeks from now, but when I said that I was going to work on that, there were, were quite a few comments of people who uh, were really hyped for this video, so I decided to work on it earlier than I had originally planned. So this is actually number nine on our Noob Corner series, and we'll be touching today on understanding why the AI behaves in certain ways in War of the Vision, and then through that knowledge, how we can better leverage it so that it actually acts in the way uh, that we want it to. Uh, and obviously, we can't change the way things are programmed. The only thing we can act on are which TMR abilities we give to units, and then which abilities do we turn on and off. Um, but understanding why units per act in a certain way allows you to turn those abilities on and off, and then just understand before uh, the match even begins sometimes the dynamics that are going to happen in between several units. So, let's begin. The first thing that I want to say is there are, from my observation, uh, and that's going to be a trend today, I did not look into the data, I'm not a uh, technical kind of guy in that sense, I don't know the programming, and I haven't talked with uh, someone from the War of the Vision staff, right? So I'm not 100% sure how everything works, but what I will share is what I've observed through my testing of several units and several team comps. Uh, hopefully it's pretty complete, but if there are things that you've experienced that I don't talk about or that are entirely different from what I've, uh, what I've experienced, please share them. I would like to understand the AI even better than I currently do. Um, but so far, I think there are three types of uh, AI behind units. Um, and each unit has those uh, multiple types, but they prioritize them in different orders. Uh, the first type is offensive AI. So this, these are units that will always choose to deal damage if they can. If they can't do, use damage, then they will either uh, support or heal depending on what's set in their second priority and third. Um, there are some units that will always choose to buff first, so if there is a target to buff within range, they'll ignore the opportunity to do damage, for example, and just keep casting those buffs until uh, all their allies have all of the buffs that they can provide. Uh, then, some units have a uh, healing priority, where if there's an ally within range that's below 50% HP or dead, they're going to want to heal that ally before doing anything else. And as I said, if there's nobody to heal, then they're going to be either attacking or supporting, depending on what's set as their uh, secondary priority. Uh, and we'll look at examples of units uh, that have these different orders um, further. But before that, I want to go into a bit more detail about each of those individual types of AI. Um, so the first one is offensive. So some units will deal damage uh, before doing anything else, no matter what. Uh, when they do, uh, what they will use in terms of move is their attack that has the highest possible amount of damage. Um, if, it's, uh, if it has the chance to hit multiple targets, that will usually mean higher damage uh, in terms of the total number, if you add in the damage that is dealt to all targets. Um, if they do have a single target attack that deals more damage than uh, what the AoE attack would deal to several targets, then they will still use the... Um, uh, the, the single target. It's really uh, what's the highest damage number that the unit can dish out, and that's what they are going to choose. Now, uh, that is affected by hate. So if an enemy has um, used a hate generating ability and is within range of your attacker, your unit will target this in priority. Then if they can hit other guys in an AoE, they will, but they will include the enemy that has hate in their attack. Um, when units uh, attack, they don't care about saving AP. What they'll do is they will use their attack with the highest damage potential, no matter the cost. Uh, they will use the cheapest AP cost skill in case of a tie, or if their attack kills the enemy. Um, and when their attack has the potential to kill, what units will do is they will use their cheapest ability that will still get the kill. So. Uh, 
They won't use like super powerful moves if they can kill the enemy with a cheaper ability, and they won't use an ability at all if they can kill the enemy with a basic attack because that has no AP cost. Um, then units with an uh, offensive priority will use basic attacks on the enemy if they can instead of buffing or doing anything else. Um, I will say, once in a while, I've seen units like Agrius go heal on a crystal instead of attacking, or uh, stuff like that. Uh, very rarely, and I'm not sure I understand these behaviors perfectly, so I don't want to touch on this too much. But there is a little bit of variance once in a while at the very end of fights. Um, and then I want to point out that units, when they attack, do not take additional effects into account unless they have an impact on damage. So Gilgamesh will use Kotetsu sometimes because the slash resistance down increases his attack uh, to be higher overall than what uh, Excalibur would be, for example. But um, if you're using a unit like Agrius um, and you would li love to see her use her limit break for the confusion, if that Agrius has Taunting Blade and her Taunting Blade would do more damage than her uh, Limit Break, she's going to use Taunting Blade because the total damage is higher. Uh, Agrius doesn't think, I want to generate hate or I want to use status effects. All she is thinking about is doing more damage. So if you would want her to use her Limit Break all the time instead of Taunting Blade, you would have to turn off Taunting Blade in that, uh, in that sense. So, um, any time that you want a unit to focus on specific moves with status effects, for example, or other added bonuses or added debuffs, uh, you have to turn off attacks that hit harder, otherwise they will prioritize those over the moves that you want them to use. Now, the second thing is support. Um, I do not know how debuffs interact with units AI. I find that they almost never use debuffs, um, but they will use uh, buffs. All right, so we've talked about offensive units. Now, that doesn't mean offensive units will never use buffs. When they're not in range of the enemy team, they will be using support abilities because that's their second AI priority. Uh, so what happens when they do, or if some units prioritize buffs before offense, for example? Well, units will always cast AOE buffs, so buffs that would affect multiple targets, before anything else. So uh, it doesn't matter what the single target buff is, if they can cast a buff on several guys, they will. Uh, then, if they can't, they will use single target buffs. Uh, when using single target buffs, uh, they will prioritize, again, allies with hate. So your hate does affect your own team's AI, um, and that's also true for healing at, uh, up to some point. Uh, and then each unit favors their buffs in uh, different order. So if you want to know whether Grace uh, is going to use target share before aimed fire, if both are available, uh, you kind of have to try those combinations out and learn each unit's priorities um, before tuning them. And I won't be showing every single unit in the game uh, with their own priorities. That would take way too much time. But by understanding... Uh, how they prioritize things in general, it's not that hard to test the couple options and then figure out what they're going to do. Um, then something I noticed when casting single target buffs is that if there is no hate, my units will target the ally that I set in slot 1 before others, then in slot 2, then in slot 3. I'm, I've noticed that in the last couple of weeks and uh, it's been my main way to make quicken comps work well. Now, maybe I'm crazy, uh, and you guys tell me if you've experienced the same thing, because it... I, like I said, I'm not entirely sure this is something I've noticed recently, but I think that if no hate is involved and all allies are in range, units will cast their buffs on the slot 1 first, then on the slot 2, then on the slot 3. Let me know. Debate time. Uh, <laughs> now, let's talk about healing. Um, so, units, again, can have the healing priority, and that can be uh, before support, uh, before damage, whatever, depending on their uh, order. But when units have a healing priority, they are going to heal targets if they have less than 50% HP. They won't heal someone that's only lost a 
100 HP or just a little bit uh, of their HP bar. Um, then, if an ally within their range is dead, they are going to raise them, and that's an order. So if there is an ally with 10% uh, HP remaining and an ally that's dead next to them, they're going to focus on healing first, then they're going to focus on reviving, and then if nobody is in range that they can heal or revive, they're going to use offensive or support action, uh, depending on what's their second priority. So we took a look at uh, these types of uh, priorities now. So. Uh, to make things more clear, I'll go over some rather popular units and name their order uh, and explain these things a little bit. So um, above, we see a couple units that have offensive uh, priorities. So the first thing that they'll do is they will attack before anything else. Uh, Eileen and Cecil both have uh, offense first, uh, but in the early turns, again, they're gen generally not in range for the enemy team, so that's when you'll see Eileen use some buffs, usually uh, Xyza's Bells that you would put on her. Uh, Cecil used his uh, Devoted Defense, where he provides a barrier with the uh, to the allied team. Once they get in range of the enemy team, though, they're just going to attack because their uh, AI uh, performs offensive moves first if there are enemies in range, and then performs buffs if they have, so the, if they have uh, no enemy in range. Um, Elshra does the same. She's going to use her Time Mage um, spell and Quicken if she can. Uh, but as soon as an enemy is in her range, she's going to attack them using her, um, her abilities. Now, I don't know if she would heal before attacking. I haven't tried her as a white mage. If that's the case, she would have a healing AI in this case. Uh, and that's why I say that sub jobs matter. If you give access to healing abilities to a unit that doesn't, it changes their AI priority. Uh, so you have to test units in, um, in all of their sub jobs, or at least if you change the, the sub job that you've equipped to them, you need to test their AI again to make sure that it didn't change uh, the way they behave for you. Uh, Warrior of Light is also an offensive unit. He's going to, to attack generally before doing anything else, uh, but in the early turns, he's still going to use his buffs. Uh, Frederica does the same. She's going to buff, but if she can attack, she will. So in shorter maps, often you'll see her never use bells or any kind of buffs because she can hit the enemy from round one. So she's just going to attack for the entire fight. Uh, same goes for Miranda, she's attacking first, then doing other stuff. Um, some other units, uh, for example the ones that I've put uh, down there, will heal first. And uh, something I've noticed is, uh, for example, Rosa. If she can heal, again, if an ally is with it lower than 50% HP or dead, she will do that. Then, if she can cast a buff, she will cast a buff. Even if there's an enemy right next to her that she could kill, she will cast Protect on the nearest ally or on herself instead of killing the enemy. So her AI has healing in first priority, then supporting in second, then offensive as a last option. So if I want to use her as an attacker, I need to make sure that I turn off her buffs, like that she, so she can never use Protect uh, or uh, even a TMR ability if the enemy's in range from turn one. So uh, the, these things have to be considered and you kind of need to test your units to uh, see what is their priority order. Same goes for Ayaka. I'm sure you've all seen Ayaka's cast haste when they could cast holy to kill an enemy. Uh, but instead she's going to hate, haste herself because her AI uh, does the healing first, then the support second, and then offense as a final option if everything else is, um, is already done. Um, Halloween Little Lila and Arithmeticians in general, uh, I think have healing in priority one, then offense, and then support, but I have seen some scenarios where Halloween Little Lila will finish off an enemy instead of healing her almost dead ally, so I'm not 100% sure how Arithmeticians fit in all that. Perhaps there's some calculation behind where uh, they calculate the total damage they can do and the total healing they can do and take the better of these scenarios. I am not entirely sure. So I put her under healing. But keep in mind that arithmeticians have really smart AIs uh, and I'm not entirely sure how it's uh, coded behind. Um, so, uh, and as far as I know, I have yet to experience a unit that will buff first without having the healing AI. Um, 
I haven't tested like Chell as a pure green mage or uh, something like that um, uh, to see if they'll just keep buffing all the time and then never uh, move on the offensive. Uh, good question. So uh, as far as I know, there's no units in there, but you guys might let me know of some that uh, you've experienced that will just uh, prioritize buffs even if they are not healers. Now, I want to talk about movement because the I find the primary type of AI that the units have influence how they're going to move when they buff or in general through the fight. So when a unit is attacking, uh, so offense, uh, they will move as far as their range allows and attack the enemy. So gunners will remain far, and if they're attacking uh, and the enemy is near them, they will move back and then fire. They try to get as far as they can and still hit. Uh, the moment when, when they will close in more on the enemy is when they want to use an AoE attack. So if they can move two extra squares forward to hit more people in their barrage, for example, then they will. So sometimes they put themselves in a bit more danger for that. Uh, but they will still be as far as they can uh, while still getting the best AoE option for them. Uh, then. When units with an offensive uh, kit generally uh, casts a buff, they will then proceed to moving towards the enemy. So you'll see Frederica use um, Aimed Fire. If she has to move before using Aimed Fire to affect more allies, she will. But if she can cast it from her starting position, she will then proceed to run towards the enemy team. Uh, and generally those units with offensive AIs will do that, but you guys can try it out. Perhaps some units have uh, very offensive AIs and uh, when they buff, stay in place. Uh, so far I have yet to experience that though. Uh, then uh, healers, when they begin healing, do the same as uh, offensive units. They stay as far as they can from the ally that they're healing. Um, as their range allows. So if it's a full life, it's only a three square range, so they're going to be rather close. Uh, but arithmeticians will often stay far behind and then heal from very far uh, because they try to keep their range, um, they try to keep their maximum range at all times. Uh, and then when buffing, these units that have a healing priority will usually not move. So you'll see Halloween the Leela on turn one just buff and stay in place, while other units will buff and then run towards the enemy team. Um, so I say generally these are tied to healer type units. Again, you can try it out. It might not be true for all units, but uh, from my observations, it is true in general. Um, so we took a look at those, but let's take a look at some popular examples and then going through usual scenarios. Um, first, I want to talk about Warrior of Light. The way I see it, Warrior of Light will prioritize offense over anything. When he's in range of the enemy team, he's going to attack them. That's generally true. Now, I don't own Warrior of Light, so I'm not sure. I want to check things out with you guys. Does he heal himself using Breath of Life every time when he's under 50% HP? Or does he only do that if there is no enemy within range? Because if he uses Breath of Life before attacking, that would mean that his healing is actually number one, then his offense is a second option, and then support. I do know that when enemies are in range, he never uses buffs. So his support is clearly after his offense, uh, and he'll only use buffs when nobody's in his range, such as in the early turns of battle. So uh, that's it for him. Then Ayaka, as we mentioned, will heal before anything else. She'll bring people back to life if there is nobody to heal. Then she'll use her buffs. She'll cast haste, protect, depending on the sub job you have. And if everyone within her range has all the buffs that she can give active, then she will think about attacking as a last option, uh, using holy or whatever other move that you've given her. Um, Frederica thinks about attacking first. If she can hit the enemy, that's what she'll do. Then in second, she'll use her buffs. Now Ayaka has aimed fire as an AoE buff uh, in the uh, uh, gunner sub job, so she can, well, 
in her gunner main job. So if she can use that, she'll use that before using Bells, for example. So if you want your Frederica to use Revitalize on turn 1, you have to turn off Aimed Fire or make sure that there's nobody near her in her first turn. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. And then if she's in range of an enemy on turn 1, she's just going to attack that enemy. She won't think about buffing at all because she has offense as her number one priority. Uh, I don't know if healing is anywhere in her priority. I've never tried to give her Masharis TMR and then place her near a half-dead ally to see if she'll heal him. If you guys want to try it out and let me know, then you could do that. Uh, but as far as I know, she doesn't have healing anywhere in her priorities. Now, Miranda is pretty interesting. She, If she can attack an enemy, she will. Uh, that's her number one priority. Then, if she can't attack an enemy and an ally is low, she'll focus on healing them. And then, third, if she has no ally near them that are low and can't attack any enemy, then she'll cast buffs. So usually in the early turn, she'll be casting haste and quicken, then she'll fight the enemy, and then if, for some reason, the enemy's frontline is dead, and uh, the enemy's ranged unit are too far for her to hit, she'll heal for a couple turns uh, before going back to offense. Uh, so that's the way her priorities are set. Um, hopefully those examples are, uh, are helpful to you. Uh, and what I recommend is that for the units that you want to learn uh, and adjust their AI, you map this out, you test them out in a couple scenarios, and then notice, okay, so they're always attacking first, then they're healing, okay, and you just set these uh, these lines because it will help you better understand the way your um, your unit's AI behaves. Um, so after that, I want to know. Uh, I want to just quickly mention something about TMR abilities. They will always follow the same rules as your unit's uh, usual abilities. They're just like a part of their kit. Uh, so if you have a TMR ability that's an AOE buff. It will be cast in priority over any single target buff in your unit's uh, kit. And then if your unit has offensive priorities, well, they're going to attack before using this buff if the enemy's in range. Otherwise, they're going to buff. Um, so you have to know these things, like uh, Xyz's Bells. Uh, your unit is going to use this buff only if they don't have an AoE buff to provide, because they use AoE buffs first. And then again, if it's an offensive uh, oriented AI, they're going to attack before using bells if they have enemies in range. So uh, these are all things to take into account. Um, then some uh, units will pr prefer to cast bells first and then some other abilities. Some units will prefer to use other abilities first and then bells. If you don't like their priority, just turn off whatever's before bells and uh, it will eventually be their number one priority. That's uh, how it works. Uh, and then, last, before we close this out, uh, about setting your team's early turns. Now, I will do a video on team building, or I'll go into more detail about this, but uh, here are quick steps to doing it. Uh, the first thing to do is to adjust your team's agility and figure out who's going to go before who, uh, because uh, since units prioritize AoE buffs, you kind of have to know where your allies will be standing compared to your starting position to know whether your unit will have allies near them, uh, because that impacts which buffs they'll choose. Uh, once you know who goes first, you can say, okay, well, I want Frederica to use aimed fire because she's with other gunners, so she'll go first, right? You can adjust your turn order based on, uh, on that. Uh, then you got to know what your units are going to use first in terms of buff so you can turn off those that get in the way of your game plan. So if, for example, uh, you want your, um, your Gilgamesh to use his defensive ability, Armor of Discontinuity, well, you need to turn off pretty much anything else in his kit because that's so low in his priority. Uh, and if you haven't tested your unit out and don't know what their priorities are, uh, well, you won't uh, turn off the right abilities. Uh, so it takes a little bit of testing before knowing that. Uh, I don't have an Excel spreadsheet of every unit in the game with their priorities. Uh, if someone wants to work on that, I think it would be a great project for the community. Uh, and then when you've set your team, you just gotta go through a couple battles and observe odd or unwanted behavior so that you can adjust. So perhaps you forgot one ability or uh, there are scenarios where the enemy team closes in on yours too quickly and that 
throws off your game plan. So you can possibly change things out a little bit to be able to uh, adjust to those scenarios. Uh, so that's the, the final step to setting up your team's early turns. Um, so that was it. I did not go into specific gameplay examples of looking at recordings of fights and then explaining why units behave in A or B way. Um, if this is the kind of thing that you'd like to see, please let me know. I could work on that as well. Uh, but for this, I didn't want to make it too long. So I decided to stay in the uh, theory making uh, portion. Um, so that was it. I know lots of people had questions on that. So if uh, it's not complete or if there's other questions, really don't hesitate to ask. I'll do my best to uh, to answer in the comment section. And if there if it's a big chunk, I'll just make another video completing uh, on that. So that's it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It will make it more likely that you see more of my content in the future. And then thank you so much for your time today and have a great rest of your day.